Hey guys, Sloppy Joe here. 2017, we made it. Uh, some of you were probably glad to see 2016 go. Um, I was good with it. 2016 was a good year. Very busy with work, um, which kept me away from doing a lot of hobby stuff. But that's okay. It was a good year. It was busy. Um, and that's fine. Uh, but 2017 is here. Um, just a little quick recap. 2016... Uh, very busy. Uh, basically, it was work, go to the gym, come home and eat and relax, wash, repeat. Uh, not a lot of time doing a lot of my a lot of my favorite hobbies. A little bit here and there, but really, it was a lot of work and just and to down you know to unwind and just have downtime. I'd go to the gym. Um, so if you know, I'm, I'm an avid lifter. I spend five six days a week in the gym lifting. Um, and eating and lifting are basically my second full-time job lately. Um, but last year, uh, I put on a lot of weight. Um, I'm up to about 240, up from 225. Um, so just eating more, lifting more, um, you know, and eating, lifting, pushing myself. And uh, yeah, so I'm bigger, stronger, lifting bigger, and lifting more weight, all that crap. Anyway, as you saw the intro to this video... Uh, is my new toy. And this was my birthday gift to myself. It is a Steyr AUG. AUG uh, stands for, what does AUG stand for? Um, it stands for uh, basically Austrian Universal Gewehr or Austrian Universal Rifle. So this is the official Austrian uh, military rifle. This is 5.56223. These were introduced back in the 70s, and if you remember them, especially from the original Die Hard movie, I believe the guy's name is Carl with the long blonde hair. Um, he he pulls the two pieces, the barrel and the stock, out of the bag, and he you know slides the barrel in and locks it together in the elevator, and they're going to kill Bruce Willis. And a lot of people just remember that and thinking, "Holy crap, that's a cool gun! I'd like to have one of those." Um, and then they look at the cost. And then they go, oh, I'd like to have one of those maybe someday. But that all being said, this is one of my bucket list guns. And I finally decided to pull the trigger. Like I said, uh, 16 was a good year. Um, and I was able to squirrel away enough uh, peanuts and walnuts to, uh, at the end, go, oh, I'm going to buy an AUG. So I bought an AUG. Uh, of course, it is white. I like the white. Uh, some people don't. I do. I like the white. It's different. Um, it's something you're not going to see. You don't see AUGs every day at the range anyway. You're definitely not going to see a white one. So, that's what I got. So, it's a 16-inch barrel. Uh, they also come with 20-inch barrels, but this is 16. Um, and that was it. I bought it. It just came with the flat top rail. I added to it, this is the Primary Arms uh, 3X Prism Optic. Um, I have a earlier generation of this on my AR, and I'm very pleased with it, so I decided to get another one and uh, mount it to this rifle. So, the only real shooting I've done with this is just sighting in the optic, and uh, that's about it. So really, I only have about 80 rounds through this. Um, when I was sighting in the optic, when it's, once I got it uh, where I was happy with it, I was losing light at the range and flinging any more bullets downrange would have kind of become just a waste um, because of poor vision. So I decided another day I will do more shooting. So I want to do uh, you know some target shooting, get out and do some movements, um, steel, you know, shooting at steel at distance, close up. Uh, to where I have to transition, move around, use my GoPro for that. Um, I, want, I want to have a lot of fun with this because I've really looked forward to getting my hands on one of these for a long time, and I'm happy to I'm happy to have it. Um, so as far as that goes, it uh, it really it doesn't it's not a hard transition to go from a standard format rifle, if you will, to a bullpup. Um, things just feel Things you just got to remember. They're just in different places. Uh, it's the best thing I can describe it as. If you can ride a motorcycle and shift gears with a motorcycle and all that. And then get in a car and shift gears and drive a car. 
uh, a manual, it it's really the same thing. Things are just in different places, but you you know what you're doing. Uh, you know that in a car, the clutch is your left foot, your gas is your right foot. You know on a motorcycle, the gas is your right hand, the clutch is your left hand. You, so you know where things are at, and they're oriented differently. But at the same time, it's kind of familiar. So uh, that's the best way I can describe it. Um, shooting it, it's very soft shooting. The weight is, uh, I know a lot of people with Tavors complain about a lot of the weight being in the stock. Uh, with this, it feels like the the good amount of the weight is kind of not so much centered forward, but centered right about here. And the optic does help with that because it is a heavy optic. But even without that, a lot of the weight is kind of right in this area here. So you end up with a very neutral feeling gun. So I'm not having to really hold this to keep it balanced. It's it's just kind of resting in the, you know, right in the web of my hand. And uh, it's not really that forward heavy. It's not really that tail heavy. It's just kind of almost neutral. Um, but that all being said, it's a very friendly gun to shoot. It's very compact. Um, it's, it's a nice shooting weapon. The only thing I'm gonna do, um, I've been talking with a gentleman who, uh, who owns a website that is, uh, AUG specific, um, he does do a um, uh, a muzzle brake versus a flash hider. So I'm going to do a brake on the front of this and see if that will uh, improve the shooting experience a little bit. But uh, other than that, I'm going to leave it alone. The only the only other thing I've done is I've replaced the charging handle uh, with a Manicore Arms charging handle. So the the factory charging handle, and I'll get this in frame. If you're if you're charging it, the factory handle kind of points up right here. So when you're charging the weapon, you have a good chance of dragging your knuckles across the rail, which sucks, of course. So what Manicore Arms' is, uh, charging handle, it, it moves it down and away from the rifle. So when you're charging it, all your knuckles stay away from the cheese grater, um, which is nice. So that's that. So basic functioning of the weapon is you're charged, you swap mags, mag release is right here on the bottom. If you're an AK shooter like me, it's kind of a second nature thing to use your thumb to squeeze the, the mag release. So pushing up right there is almost natural. So it would just be boom, boom. You got to really shove it in and you're good to go. Bolt release, you're ready to rock and roll. Uh, trigger, trigger's okay. Uh, a lot of people complain about the trigger on this feeling spongy, vague, and not there, and all of those accounts are pretty correct. Uh, trigger feels spongy, vague, and not there. Uh, it's a very weird, um, sensation. It's very, uh, spongy, uh, plasticky. And of course, that's because the trigger pack in this is all polymer. There's no metal in it, except for the springs. Um, so it's a, it's a weird spongy feeling that I'm sure I could get used to with time, but like I said, only 80 rounds. I've got a lot of time and a lot of mileage to put on this rifle, and I'm sure I'll get used to it and like it more and more. Um, that all being said, maybe at some point, uh, Geisel or one of the, the trigger, uh, aftermarket trigger manufacturers will make something for these as they do the Tavor to help improve things. We'll see. Um... I'm not going to bother right now with takedown because you guys probably know how these things come apart. For the most part, they're not that difficult. Maybe you want to see it. It's very easy. I guess I can, I guess I could do that real quick. So all you got to do, I'm going to drop the mag. The weapon is not loaded. So you just thumb release right here. Boom. Mag drops. Then you slide the charging handle back to the forward position. There is a release tab right there. Push it through the weapon, like so. And it is captured, so it ain't gonna go anywhere. Do that, and then this, the receiver, slides up and away. So you have this section, and then you have your rods, bolt, group. That's all right there. And then if you want to get, that's really as far as you would have to field strip this to clean it. Um, if you want to get more down and dirty, then all you got to do is there's a little plastic or the little, that little tab right there or a little depression in the buttstock. 
you push that down and then it'll allow you to pull out this pin like that and then butt stock or the the rubber pad comes off and then your trigger pack would come out that's really all there is to it uh it's it's very easy very basic there's not that much that can really go wrong with this thing it's very well designed even for being a uh you know how old is this thing now 45 years 40 years somewhere in there um uh that's about it really uh so two variations of this rifle that you should know about if you're interested in at some point maybe getting one uh they come with two different style stocks And the two style stocks that you would be concerned about are, this is what they call the AUG stock. This is a factory AUG stock. It only accepts AUG magazines, Steyr AUG magazines. The difference between a Steyr magazine and a M4 AR mag is AR mags release in the they release and clip in on the sides, whereas this, there's the tab on the back. So AR mags, P mags, the tabs are on the side. This one, it's on the rear. So you have to use a Steyr style mag. Now, my understanding is Magpul does make a Steyr uh, P mag with the tab on the rear that will work just fine in this rifle. And I intend on getting several of them and running them and seeing how they do. This mag has been flawless, of course. They're supposed to be great mags. Um, I'll probably acquire more of these as well, but I'm really curious to try out the Magpul mag. The other option is what they call the NATO stock. So that would be the entire stock would be replaced with a unit that will accept P mags, regular Magpul mags, uh, surplus AR mags, all the above. Um, if you have a, uh, an AUG rifle like I do and you want to swap, it's about a $500 change to get the other stock um, and vice versa. So if it's really important to you to run uh, P mags, surplus AR mags, etc., make sure to get the NATO stock. If you don't care, then just get the regular AUG stock and you're ready to go. So I'm going to close on that, but... Uh, I just wanted to show my uh, my new toy for the year. I'm going to do a lot with this rifle over the year. Uh, a lot of shooting, a couple upgrades, maybe here and there. We'll see. But this will probably be a, uh, a featured toy in videos for the year. Um, other things to come. Uh, I, I've paid a lot of attention. Um, as I've not been very active with videos, I've paid a lot of attention to comments, suggestions, things to make things better, things to improve on. Um, and just things that guys want updates on things they haven't seen in a while and they want to, they want to know how things are holding up, how they are, if I like them still, if I don't, if I've sold it, if I said this is a piece of crap and I threw it in a river. Um, so I'm going to address a lot of these things and, uh, I got, I got a lot to get caught up on. So I'll definitely be more active, um, over the coming months and the coming year. And again, uh, I'll be doing a lot of uh, a lot of shooting with my my new toy, my new AUG. So that's it for now. I'm going to cut it off there because one of the things I want to improve on is shortening video time, uh, and that means I'm going to cut this thing off before 15 minutes, and I'm at 14:05. So that all being said, welcome to 2017. I hope so far the year has been treating you well. Uh, and that is it. Other than that, stay safe, be good, get out and shoot, have fun. Uh, that's it. So we'll see you guys next time. Thanks.